Welcome to the Air Gun Show. In this week's episode, I'm going to be taking a look at a new offering from MTC Optics. First up though, we're joining Rich Saunders and his mates as they head out to make a serious hit on the grey squirrels. Controlling grey squirrels is a never-ending job on this estate. Not only do they impact the native ecology, the trees here are farmed for lumber, and by stripping bark, squirrels cause untold financial loss. We're putting up a couple of new feeders, one's replacing an old feeder that's falling apart, and another is going in a new section of the wood, and we're mounting them on trees that have been identified to come down anyway. Peanuts attract squirrels like nothing else, and fortunately the estate buys them for us. So we're going to bring the feeders, they take about 15 kilos each, so we don't have to keep coming back to top them up, and then we'll plan on shooting in another couple of weeks. I know some people question the tactic of baiting squirrels to a feeder, but this is pest control, not hunting, and I've yet to find a better way. The new feeders have been up a couple of weeks now. The woods are still really wet, so we're having to walk the last way to where we have our hides. Neil's shooting on a brand new area of the woods which we've not shot before, but the level of peanuts has been going down really quickly and trail camera footage has shown lots of squirrels. Kev's feeder is also in a new section of the woods but has only been shot a couple of times. Once again the level of feed and trail camera footage suggests he's going to have a really busy day. Me on the other hand, I've got a new feeder because the last one fell apart, but it's in an area I've been shooting for some time. To start with I was getting lots of squirrels but the last few months I've seen returns getting smaller and the level of peanuts not going down so I'm hoping I've really thinned out the numbers um, but there's still a few about and I'm hoping to get the last few stragglers but I expect the action to be pretty slow to be honest. It's a bit like painting the fourth bridge after all. Well that was three in quick succession. That third one took a little bit of time getting to the feeder, but he just couldn't resist a peanut. Well I'm sure the uh, peanut feeder is what's drawing them in but that's three I've had now that have been poking around on the floor um, but I've managed to get a clear shot at each one of them so uh, happy days.
Oh, that's Neil and Kevin. It looks like they're, they're getting amongst the squirrels. They've got quite a few now. For me, though, it's been really quiet. I haven't even seen a squirrel yet. Um, so it's probably a good time for me to talk you through the gear I'm using very quickly. The rifle is a, a Walther Rotex RM8. Oh, that's Kevin and Neil. They've got another one. Um, it's the UC version 12 foot pound 2.2 rifle uh, and I really like this rifle, um, very reliable, I've been using it for years. Uh, yeah, 12 foot pound 2.2 uh, rifle, 8 shot magazine, which isn't the biggest capacity but I think it will last me plenty of shots today. And I'm using JTS uh, dead centre pellets through it which I find work really really well, use it on lots of different rifles. Um, it's a, a buddy bottle rifle, so plenty of shots, si uh, bolt action, and it's regulated as well. Now, held on with a set of sports match mounts is a Hawk um, Air Max uh, 30 WA SF 4 to 16 by 50 scope. It's the second focal plane version as well. And although it can, well, that's a nice bright day, it can get quite murky in the woods at times, but the image through the, the glass is really, really good. And if it gets a little bit too murky, I do have the, the illuminated reticle fe uh, feature as well. Well, that one was a long time coming. I don't mind telling you. Um, Neil and Kevin have been getting loads, but um, nice to join in. And that one went up to the feeder facing me, and that was as clean a kill as you could possibly imagine. He really didn't know what hit him. I don't know, I've seen more jays than squirrels today. They're just as harmful as magpies when it comes to songbird predation. But the landowner wants them left alone, so that's what I'm going to do. At least I know where my peanuts are going, though.
Oh, that's another squirrel for Kevin and Neil. They've had so many now. It's still been really quiet here. I've only had that one. But as I said before, I'm shooting on an area of woods that's been shot an awful lot. So I'm not surprised there aren't as many here. I'm sure there's another one with my name on it though. Well, that one came to the top of the feeder and then I think you must have heard me or saw me because he absolutely froze, but that just made it an easier shot, to be honest. Um, things have gone quiet for Kevin and Neil now. I had to wait absolutely ages for that one. So I think we're going to call it a day and go and pick up all those squirrels. Well, Neil and Kev have made a great start on the new parts of the woods. And I've only had a couple today, which is, I think, to be expected. And I think there's a few more here yet to be had. But I'm going to take these ones off to the Falconry Centre and then we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Well, that may have been a slow session in the hide for Rich there, but his mate's results more than made up for that. Next up, I'm going on safari with a new scope from MTC. Okay, so I've got a lovely little scope from MTC Optics here. It's the MTC Copperhead Safari F2. And very interestingly, this scope has been produced to complement the aesthetics of the popular Safari Edition air guns made by Daystate and BRK. Although I want to keep this mostly about the scope, I will tell you a bit about the gun that I've paired it with. Now this is the Daystate Huntsman Revere Safari. It is a very accurate multi-shot PCP with a super slick magazine fed side lever action. Now I actually like this gun so much that I've got two of them in sub 12, a 177 and a 22. Equipped with a Huma regulator, the Huntsman Revere is very, very consistent. Now it's got a lovely elegant cylinder yet this 177 is capable of returning about 140 shots from a full 250 bar fill. And the 2.2 will do about 160. Now, comfortably under three kilos, it's nice and light, and its traditional sporter styling makes it very kind on the eye. The Huntsman Revere has always been a lovely looking air gun, but I really think the Safari stock brings something extra to it and also to other Safari models. Now, I really like its dark, smoky tones and there's certainly something very rugged about this handle. It also blends in very well with the natural environment, which is certainly handy when you're hunting. The raised grain finish of the Safari stock also has other advantages. It eliminates flash, it's very grippy, and it's also extremely practical. It does an incredibly good job of disguising the inevitable knocks and scratches that you're going to pick up in the field. And even if it does get a proper ding, it is very easy to touch it up and make it look as good as new. Now I've actually used felt tip pens to touch up the stocks on my Safari air guns on numerous occasions, and you would never know. Going back to the scope, 
This is the MTC Copperhead Safari F2 4 to 16 by 44 and it has a recommended retail price of £348. Now, it has been designed for shooters who, like me, love the look of the Safari Edition air guns and its copper coloured finish just sets it off a treat on these rifles. And on guns like the Alpha Wolf Safari, it doesn't just match the woodwork, but also the copper coloured metalwork too. As the F2 in its name implies, this is a second focal plane scope. Now, it weighs in at a pretty modest 690 grams and it's just 275 millimeters long. Now, you can see that it looks great on the Huntsman Safari, but those compact proportions would also make it a great match with a stubby bullpup. Now, the Copperhead Safari may be small, but it is very tough. It's nitrogen purged and it's fully waterproof, fog proof and shock proof. Decent glass, multi-coated lenses, a 44 mm objective and a 30 mm tube ensure solid optical performance with good light transmission. Now the sight picture is bright and clear and it stays sharp right to the edges. Now, this scope has a zoom range of 4 to 16 times, which I think is just about perfect for air gun shooting. The grooved zoom dial turns smoothly to wind the mag down for a wider field of view at close range or to zoom right in for increased precision when tackling long range targets. The Copperhead Safari is equipped with MTC's AMD2 reticle brought into sharp relief with a quick turn of the fast focus ocular dial, this is a really nice reticle. Fine and clear, it boasts plenty of aim points to compensate for the rise and fall of the pellet and the effect of the wind without looking too complicated or cluttered. The inner crosshair element of the reticle can be illuminated red in six levels of brightness by turning the outer dial on the left hand turret. Now this is a great feature because it means that you can maintain a clear aim point in tricky light conditions. The inner dial on that left turret is the parallax wheel. Now it turns really smoothly to eliminate parallax error and to bring the target into clear focus from just 10 meters out to infinity. I really like this scope's finger adjustable windage and elevation turrets. They're nice and chunky but not too high and they're also resettable. Pull them out to unlock them and they turn with really clear stops, each one adjusting the point of impact by one centimetre at 100 metres or a quarter of a centimetre at 25 metres. Once you've got them zeroed, simply snap them back down and they're locked and not moving anywhere. The Copperhead Safari doesn't come supplied with a huge raft of accessories and I think that's a good thing because it implies that all your spend is going on a quality scope. It does, however, come with a battery for the illuminated reticle and a set of push-on flip-up lens covers. So, that's a quick look at the MTC Copperhead Safari F2 scope and one of the lovely air guns that it's been designed to complement. It's tough and compact and it boasts exceptional performance. It is also a great looking scope and I've got a feeling that that Safari finish could also make for a really good match with plenty of other air guns. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for in this week's episode, but as ever, I'll be back again in two weeks with much more. 
Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, do take a look at the subscription offer that we have for Airgun World magazine. There should be a link to that in the show description. Finally, if you aren't already a member of the BASC, do have a look at their website and check out the benefits that you could be taking advantage of through Airgun membership. As I said, I'm back again in a fortnight. In the meantime, enjoy your shooting and stay safe. BASC provides for me as a member one voice. It's the one organisation that does it all for me. BASC is, is community. We are BASC. We are BASC. We are BASC.